Let's get it started and ha! Let's get it started and here. What's up, everybody? Not another top 10 show. Back at ya. Uh, before we get going, I just want to extend a gratitude for everybody listening to the podcast and in honor of everyone. Yeah, I'm going to do it. No, it's just a weird looking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's like a, a little disc. Little disc so, for those of you who don't understand what we're talking about, um, <laughs> We're talking about uh, the Hateful Eight Steelbook that comes with the digital code, and it actually is in the shape of a disc in a disc pouch almost. So, if you haven't, if you don't know what uh, the Steelbook is, now you know. So, anyways, um, so we're thanking everybody who's been watching or listening and liking and commenting and subscribing. I think uh, Joe and. Jack Mehoff, I'm not being dirty, that's like really the guy's name on YouTube. And Colin Wells have been commenting, which is really sweet. Um, but sharing is awesome, likes are awesome, views are even better. But um, just to show you guys our appreciation, we are going to give, we're actually going to have a contest of um, comments. So from now until our next video goes up, you have a chance to comment on this video, which I'll get into what we're doing in a minute. But what it is going to be for is the Hateful Eight uh, ultra Ultraviolet Code. So it's pretty pretty simple. We will have the contest run until we put the next video up. We'll go through and pick the best comment. Now you can tell us how bad we are. You can tell us how good we are. Um, you can chime in on what your top five or top ten is. Or you can whatever. You can butter us up. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But the best comment will win and... There will be uh, uh, three judges to, to vote for. So um, if you win, we'll get in contact with you and give you the code. So Good please luck. comment. Yeah, comment. Um, but today's Not Another Top Ten show is going to be the best Jake Gyllenhaal films. In honor of Demolition by Jean-Marc Vallée, or however you say his name, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, it's not just going to be based on only his acting, but um, the film as a whole. And with me... With me, Scott Icebox Nimi, is Damon Big Dizzy Gumbert. Hello. I'm just going to say you're pimping the airwaves because it, it's catchy. Yeah, so. it, is, it is pretty catchy. <laughs> also true. I've been, so. I've, been saying it, I've been saying it ever since you started on Or, well, That's no, great. the second time on here. And Trace Couch Patchin. Uh, <laughs> right. I don't know what that means. It's catching it's, on. Uh, it's catching on. Thank you, Rikita. Your, is that your fault? <laughs> I saw it in the yearbook. Do you, you, oh, you went back in? Oh. No, no, no. I think someone showed me it in the I yearbook. I may have Snapchatted he's that been, he's or been put it on Instagram. It so. <laughs> it's Damon's fault. God. When in I, doubt, blame Damon. And it's super irrelevant, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, this will be the third straight week we're doing a, a trio, I think, going back to film scores. So yeah. if you haven't listened to film scores, go back and do that. Um, if you haven't listened to last week's Best Superhero Films, go back and listen to that. Mm-hmm. We had Royce Brackett on there, who almost gave away his own identity. Yeah, he he stole the show. Stole did really, the show. He really did a good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, he did. That, that he did. So hopefully we can have him back on here soon. Uh, what have you guys been watching? Not a whole lot. I'm trying to catch up on Daredevil season two. Oh, I finished it. Is it so good? did I. Uh huh. Dude, I'm just. Better. I got like this weird man crush on John Bernthal for some. Which is totally, yeah. totally lot. Like it's, it's okay. He's yeah. awesome. Who doesn't? Right? <laughs> He's, but yeah, I'm trying to catch up on that. But. Yeah. You? Um, I'm as I said before we started. I'm watching The Ranch, which is a new Netflix show, which is like somewhere in between bad and good. Like it's funny at points, but like also. In, terrible at other points so deadpool yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> i'm giving it a ride dude i think ryan Reynolds is perfect for that role it's, oh, it's a funny he, oh yeah he definitely it's just, a funny he's sometimes they role. overdo it on the fact that they're they're in on the joke you know yeah. oh, it's like yeah. come on yeah the meta does hit you in the face a couple of times that's just like my problems with it but. yeah but what are you watching i just finished daredevil season two mm-hmm. which is pretty sweet um what else did i watch i watched uh Enemy. I watched Hateful Eight again. I watched Prisoners for the first time. I watched. You're getting ready for this. Oh, podcast. I already said Deadpool, but that's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then I went back and watched um, uh, Alien. Nice. Interesting. So nice. yeah, yeah. Alien Day is coming up pretty soon here. There's an Alien Day. Yeah, four twenty-six. 
Why is oh yeah no I did see that yeah because that was the that birthday. was the planet that they landed on or whatever on Alien Day no it's day the day after, after oh. his birthday you'd be the sole survivor because they're, be they're the selling the the shoes Reebok I think it's Reebok it might be Adidas I don't remember you'll anymore. probably get them Damien I'm trying get them, <laughs> get them for they're, my birthday dude celebrate two two birds one stone I'm definitely Thanks. not buying your shoes oh come well, on I have an oh. idea How they're definitely gonna it? be super expensive but I'm just gonna be like. Ugh. <laughs> We'll split it. We'll split, split the it. Shoe? One shoe. Yeah, each. one shoe. Each. One <laughs> shoe. Each. That's a new thing, people. dude. That's a new thing. Uh, they have these Alexander. We'll the, we have Alexander the Great tennis shoes um, that I can buy, and they're different color shoes. They're sweet shoes, but yeah. they're different colors. It's weird. Yeah, but weird. anyways, back the to Alexander the topic the at hand. Different colored shoes. <laughs> uh, best Jake Gyllenhaal film. So, for those of you who don't know or don't remember, um, what we do is we went our separate way after we made our topic. We each made a top ten um, best Jake Gyllenhaal films. We're gonna go over our top five. If for some reason, which is probably going to be most likely, yes, um, gonna happen today, because although Jake Gyllenhaal is very good, not a um, lot of films. Some of it, yeah, not a lot of films, and some of his films, uh, quite frankly, aren't the best. Yeah. It's not no. indicative to his acting ability. They're just bad movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't write... Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so if I have Bubba Boy, my number five, and Damon says, whoa, 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 wait, I got it higher, I'm going to have to pull... Um, Which will not happen. I'm going to have to pull my, my number six and put it in my number five. If my six is gone, then I go seven, eight, nine, ten, that kind of thing. And don't worry, you will under, you will get to hear our um, complete top ten, so... Yes. At the end, we'll all make one can't giant wait, list and... Can't wait to get screwed on that one again. Just like last week. So, v, is V for Vendetta a superhero movie? Technically, yes. No, <laughs> I, no I'm going. I'm going to Suck argue it. that. No, it's not. There's <laughs> not. How is V for Vendetta a superhero movie? Well, I don't... Okay. he does some pretty super things in that movie. Yes, yeah, super, but he's not a superhero. Oh, he's a hero. He's, he's not. An anti-hero. He's an antihero. Well, That's well. why I didn't. I. Dude, we didn't put the crow on there, and I oh, probably really? that was your and decision. I, and I, right. Right. Then, then yes, if crow didn't make it, v for that's because you didn't want to put. It. It, it, that, no, because no I no because I figured superhero films. I mean, I'm gonna go off of people who are in comic books, not just graphic I, novels. Yeah, I guess and based off graphic novels. So. I had Hellboy, and I actually dropped Hellboy off of it. Oh, Hellboy crazy. is totally a superhero, though. Well, what I guess. That? We'll move on. We'll have a, I guess we'll superheroes a, a little light. Yeah. We'll have a 2.0 for that episode down the line. We'll, we'll get to we it. We really don't need to have a 2.0 for um, that episode. So we'll do, uh, I'll do my 5.4, and then we'll go around 5.4, 5.4, five, four, five, four, and then 3.2, three, 3.2, two, 3.2. Three, two, three, two. And Good then, of course, so. our number ones, and then we'll create the list. All right. All right. So, enough of the rambling. Let's get rolling here. Uh, let's say my number five. October Sky. Nice. Higher? Anybody? Nope. It was six for me. So okay. Well, then, all right. I'm ready to talk about it. Um, we got it shoved down our throat in middle school, I yep. believe it was. Yep. Yep. Uh, Multiple but, times. <laughs> but when you... I haven't watched it since then, but I can tell you I've watched it before middle school, and then I watched it a few times in middle school, and I still love the movie. I think it's a great... It's a great period piece um, that's set in the 1950s, um, and it... it brings me back to the decade of the 90s uh but you know every time i think of the movie october sky i can hear uh mark isham's score in my head and you know what i'm talking about yeah. right it's yeah. kind of like that i don't know this rustic sound mm-hmm. um because what they're in like west virginia Col- it's uh west virginia colwood west virginia i just watched it last steel night. trap hey i have a steel trap mine i, I just guessed um but, you know, Damon, me and Damon had a conversation about it yesterday, and we were mainly joking, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, There's a lot of sarcasm involved. It, it, it was. I mean, I guess you can be... It, it might be geared towards, you know, 12-year-olds, but... I mean, it's, it's a PG movie, isn't it? It's not yeah, even PG-13. It's, it's PG, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so is Inside Out. Yeah. Yeah, and those are generally geared towards children. Especially... Well, I don't know if I... I don't know if I'd they, say... They definitely have adult themes or jokes in there, but they're... Mainly, I mean, especially with, and since you brought it up, an animated movie, those are geared towards. I get, children. I get a feeling and, of it, like especially watching it last night, of a, like a lighter stand by me kind of, like it kind of takes these kids, yeah, yeah. And, kind um, of backwoods. And, yeah, exactly, backwoods. These kids are kind of rebelling against what their community is doing and stuff, and doing what they want to do. Well, I mean, I think 
the common theme of dreaming and chasing your dreams um, have never stuck in my mind so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, as much as this film has made it. Hall, of course, um, I, I don't know, if, was he the lead in it? It was his first leading role, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he was, I thought he was pretty good. And, you know, him being Homer Hickam and then ended up, you know... But, but I think the biggest thing in that film is the way the mother supported him throughout, you know, when she signed that picture of... Uh, Warner von Braun, and then she she signed it herself, yeah. you know. But yeah. like to keep this kid pushing forward and and you know realizing it might be the only way for him to get out of the town because usually it was what just sports scholarships. You get sports or you, scholarship or you're going to the coal. Yeah, the mines. yeah, you're going the to the mines. mines, and they call it a mine. Yeah, a mine. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. Um, Gimli. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but I'm not gonna fault a film that you know knocked. A home run for its target audience. You oh, know? absolutely. I mean, it, it it hit it hit me. I guess. I don't know. I guess I really like Chris Cooper too. He's yeah, that's real... what I was just gonna say. My favorite uh, scene in that movie is when he. I mean, he's because he's kind of a hard character in the movie. Yeah, he's he is a hard dad right. for him. But he's like he's not a bad guy either. Like when he stood up for his friend who was getting hit on by um, his stepdad or something. Oh yeah, yeah. And you... he like yeah. He'd if like, that boy's father was alive, he'd kick your yeah. ah, butt. So I'm going to have to That's do That's the it edited version. They <laughs> yeah, don't say but. ass, but they say butt. Um, no, yeah, Chris Cooper is such... He's such a good uh, good actor. Did, did he or did he not win an Oscar for his role in Adaptation? adaptation I yes. believe he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah he's, a, he's a good character. He's in uh, The Patriot, too. Yep, yep. Good guy, good guy. Yeah, Chris he, Cooper's good. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's he's he's that character that sort of just accepted his role, kind of the the way things are. I guess to him, the world is West Virginia, so right. Um, you so, know, you either you, you know you just accept the fact that you're going to the mines. That's that's all you got to do, and mm-hmm. he's excelled at it. You know, so I get like I get where yeah, and I get where Homer gets his resilience from. You know, his old man. So. I think it's a yeah, it's a really good Very film. Very solid film. Yeah, that's five. Oh, four. Crap. This was. Oh. This was going between the two. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not higher. So I'm gonna go four. Zodiac. Higher. Oh, it's higher. All right. Uh, let's dig down here on my six. Brokeback Mountain. No. Nope. All right, I, I didn't seen it. So oh. I've never seen it either. God, you guys, <laughs> killing me. Right. I was honestly I, gonna, I was gonna look it up and see if I could find it last night it, and so watch yeah. it. But then I was like, I it's don't want to watch it and then throw it into my top ten. It's good, man. I mean, it's um, you know, if you want emotion, you got to check this film out because, you know, we all know that it's Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal getting it on, but uh, <laughs> there's literally like one scene of that anyway. I know, but even when they're going at it, like heavy make out and stuff yeah. it's it i say it's i mean it's it's hard sometimes hard it's a hard movie to watch sometimes but um y- you still kind of can't take your eyes off it because you know ang lee's vision of the film and all the you know the the actors that portray all the all those characters do such a great job that it's it's really it, it's a really um intense <coughs> intense piece but were Ledger and Gyllenhaal nominated for that film, or was it just Ledger? I'm not sure. Like acting, uh, but but you know, it's like it's like that outlawed love, you know, right. and one that could prove deadly if the wrong people found out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not just the roller coaster co- coaster of emotions that the main characters go through, you know, Ledger and uh, Gyllenhaal, but what their wives are put through, you know, that you know, like a series of, of you know turbulent emotions because you know one of them finds out Mm -hmm. she sees her husband who has two kids with her making out with another guy you know and it's just and i also like how they don't sugarcoat it i mean like they're there on brokeback mountain and then they go their separate ways for a long time like we, we can't do this kind of thing and then when they meet back up then it's you know then it, it kind of rekindles yeah. the relationship, but, um, you know, I said before, it's hard to watch at times, but, you know, so difficult to look away, and I don't just mean, like, the, the make-out scenes and such, it's just, it's a really, I mean, you're in on a secret 
that these two characters have that you know you're almost like when is it gonna happen when is it gonna yeah, happen when oh, is someone gonna find out there it is you know so um it's basically a film that has you know that themes they have themes that aren't normal for a lot of people you know being a straight guy you know it's not something i'd go run out to watch every day right. and even for the longest time i steered clear of it because you get ridiculed if you were watching Brokeback Mountain, but I have Bravo Network, again, to thank for that. It's when I first saw Pulp Fiction and Stand By Me, and now Brokeback Mountain. That's three movies I was introduced to from just that network alone. Yeah. So, Bravo. Bravo Bravo, to Bravo. Bravo, Bravo. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, making, it's a making a great piece of art, Ang Lee did, um, that isn't displayed, I guess, the correct way for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of people hold back and watching it because of, you know, two yeah, guys. Yeah, they have, I mean, I don't know. You, you, can, you, can, you can hold off on the movie because of those, I don't know. I, don't know, maybe, why would, I guess, what, what's the point of people making fun of you for it, really? You know what I, mean? I mean, because it, it's the homosexual. At this, at this point, like, no one's going to care. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because, I mean, but, no, A, I remember, we're, we're, we're grown adults. And I, remember, but... and I remember the jokes about the movie back when it came out, too. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. You watched that. Different you were going to watch that movie, but, you know, I mean, it's. I, yeah. I don't think it should be a problem with the movie. It's a love story. Yeah. It boils down to. But yeah, no, I, I've been pushing that movie off, and I, I need to see it. Yeah, no, I know, it's good, it's good, it. it's a good one to sit down and watch, and it's, I mean, I'm assuming it, it's, you know, it gets better and better with each watch. I've only seen it bits and pieces once, and then watched it one time full, right. uh, fully through, so I'm sure, it, I'm sure it takes multiple viewings before you can really latch on and love the movie, but yeah, after I watched it on Bravo, I was like, damn, it's no wonder that Ang Lee was... You know, nominated. Right. Oh, absolutely. And one? No, he didn't win. Yeah, he did win. He, he won. won. That was two years, I think, after. Um, it Hulk. was. It was only. Yeah, I yeah. think like. I think it was his next movie after Hulk. I yeah. believe so. So, way to go, Ang Lee. Yeah. Improved. But that's my. Uh, that's my five and four. So, All which right. way do we want to go here? Hold on. Uh, Ledger, Hall, and Michelle Williams were all nominated. Cool. None of them won, but no. they were all nominated for Oscars. Yeah. Well. For that roles. For their roles in that movie. So it's good. Go. Man. I'll go. I'll go. Okay, number five might be higher on other people's lists. Uh, prisoners. I got it higher. Oops. Watches it for the first time like last night and puts it higher. Dude, I'm telling you, Denny V, <laughs> dude, Dennis V is. Uh, I'm. I'm like yeah, really I'm itching. Enemy, yeah, uh, I'm. Sicario. I'm really itching to get. Um, yeah, Sicario. Yep. I haven't watched it yet, so. No, I know, but I mean, those like three back-to-back films he made, and they're all pretty, pretty well received. So, um. I guess I'll drop six was October Sky, so seven would be end of watch for me. Higher, higher. Oh my god, I dude, hate Bubble this. Boy might make this list. Oh no. <laughs> All right, Jarhead. Jarhead is not. It's it's on my list, but farther down. It's not on my. I top think five. I have it at the same seven. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have it, it at seven. nine. So. Okay. All right, man. Talk right, about let's it. Talk about Jarhead. <laughs> well, I mean, Oorah. it's not your typical war film because there's not a lot of war going yeah, on in it. Um, but I think it's, and, and I think, and I remember watching it the first time and it wasn't, it, I didn't appeal to me right away. I don't know. I, I, I guess I didn't like it right away, but then I watched it a couple times cause it was on TV like all the time when it first, when I oh, first yeah. saw it, oh, yeah. it was oh, yeah. always on. So TNT. I finally just kind of watched it again reluctantly. And then I actually really liked it. Um, I mean, all the performances in the film were very well done. And I think the film overall is well done. I don't remember the director of the film. Um, but, um, just the, um, the anxiety and, like, the, the, uh, the pressure put on these soldiers to, like, to want to perform, to want to, like, itch to, to actually participate in a war was, I thought was done really well in this film. Um, I gotta give hats off to, what is it, Peters? What is, what is that guy's name? Skarsgård? Yeah, Skarsgård. Yeah. He did a fantastic job in that film. Um, alongside He's in another Gyllenhaal. movie with Gyllenhaal. Is it, I think, Sor- Source Code? Yes, he was in Source Code. Yeah. He was in Source Code? Yeah, yeah. he was. Hmm. I forgot he was in it. That's weird. Um, Sam Mendes did Jarhead. Sam Mendes did Jarhead. Yeah. Blows my mind. Well, I mean, there you go. Well, I mean, blow me down. 
That was Popeye. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Nobody got that. <laughs> well, anybody who's a fan of Full House, man, yeah, that's I a joke. Uh, I always like this. I always want to say Uncle Joey, but just Joey always yeah. does that. Yeah. He always does those Popeye impressions. But yeah, that's I, I throw. I, that's why I put it on my list. Obviously, it's higher up than where Prisoners was. Um, but when when he's you remember at the end, I don't know if it's sort of the end. I haven't seen this movie in so long. My brother loves it. Uh, when they're, I think they're gonna be sniping people up there, and like yeah. that dude pisses his pants and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it, who's with them? Jamie Fox. Or Jamie Fox is like his higher up. Who who's in there with him? Well, like it was it was, at him it was Gyllenhaal and um, Sarsgaard. Yeah. Were there because they were. Respectively, spotter and sniper. Yep, exactly. What yeah. I thought there was someone else in the room too, but I'm not. Yeah, 100%. yeah, no. I think it's some some greenhorn or something that starts pissing his pants and yeah. they start yelling at him. Like I never got that out of my head. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it has intense scenes for something that's it actually has some pretty um, beautiful cinematography in it too. Especially like when the when the fires are going up, the oil fires. Oh uh, yeah, at yeah. Night, that looks sweet. Um, but yeah, um, so Roger Deakins did it. Roger Deakins. Which did it? He did another. Uh, he did um, the cinematographer for Prisoners. Oh, and it looks fantastic in that movie uh-huh. too. Yeah. Oh, um, this dude. That dude's been nominated like, I'm not even shitting you, like 50 times. Yeah. And he's, he's never, never won. He's never won. That's crazy. No, no. I, I, hold on. I missed. I messed that up. I think it's John Williams has been nominated 50 John times. John Williams has been nominated 50 times, and he's only won five. But Deacons, I don't think, has yes. ever won. And he's been nominated like 14 times or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Old for 14. Especially when you can pick somebody's sim- cinematography out and say, wow. Oh, this 13. Is... He's old for 13. Yeah. God, Just that DiCaprio guy is good. Is shame. Um, but, but, yes. here, but here's Chivo raking in every single one. Anyways, yep. keep going. All right, so that's that's <laughs> my five then. Um, and this is probably going to be higher on his list at least. Well, probably. I, uh, Boy's four is this. Donnie Darko. Oh, hell no. No? Uh, no way. Same spot. Four? All right, All right wow. let's talk about it. Okay, um, again, another movie I really actually despised at first. Um, it's a, I mean, it, especially when it came out, I was younger, younger movie viewer. Yes. Um, so the yes. themes of the film yeah, confused not a season. me. Oh, it's super confusing. It confused like, me. Can, I mean, You can watch it like seven times and still not fully well, grasp what is happening. I will, I will blame... I remember the day, not the actual day, but I remember where I was trying to watch this movie and who it was with, which I'm not going to name all the names, yeah. but it was at Damon's yep, house. it was in my living room. We were watching Your living it. room, and like everyone having to quiet down when the words came on, and then they'd read the words out loud, and I was like, well, you weren't partaking in this, but... No, because I'm not a douche. I was just thinking <laughs> to myself, like... I am a douche. I, I hate this movie. You know, and like I've had this animosity towards it for so long just because it's the ray it was effect a, it it's was a bad effect. experience well yeah it was a terrible experience it's like you couldn't talk during the movie but then someone would read the call what like, was really weird was that wasn't out. the really? first time we had seen the movie so i don't know why we had to be quiet well it was probably like you guys were trying to solve it or something i mean let's just be honest i'm just gonna say the name and you can bleep it out if you want no don't, don't just say the name i'll have okay. to edit it and you say. I want to know. Tell me afterwards. Okay, then. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, so we're here tag team this with me, so you can just yeah, it'll be your four too. Yes, Patrick um, Swayze. Oh, I mean, yeah, cast is great. Um, uh, short cameo by Seth Rogen in there. Um, <laughs> Not really a cameo. He's <laughs> just a <laughs> character. Oh really uh, yeah, I guess he's. You didn't really. I didn't even or... realize it was him until Superbad, and then I was yeah. like, "Holy shit, that's the guy from Donnie Darko." Yeah. Uh, just on a side note, you guys remember in Superbad when uh, Bill Hader is like teach you i will yeah. <laughs> like, and then uh seth rogan's trying to do it but he's just like thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, we might have to do comedy soon yeah we gotta do a comedy soon <laughs> oh, for, for sure. sure um but obviously um great um soundtrack um associated with the film the song uh the song redone by gary jules is awesome mad I world mad world is great yeah um, that was uh, it was Royce Brackett's obsession for a solid year. Oh, <laughs> before the gorillas or after? Uh, probably around the same time because he loves him some of the gorillas. Which yeah, that's right, Royce. I'm throwing shade. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah. What do you? What do you? Have to uh, say about yeah. It? No, it's the first time I watched it. We were definitely confused about the whole time travel aspect. Um, that and part of the movie, I mean, like... It's super confusing, because yeah. they're not, like, 
they don't like. But in a good way. I mean, you gotta you gotta yeah. sit there and it's think. It's right like, at my it's, alley. Yeah, it's, it's not. I got it's, ruined. It got ruined for it, me. So I mean, it, it wasn't even the movie itself. It was just the situation yeah, we're in that. Yeah, it, it, and you never revisited. And you never it. revisited. The, the should, only time I should. watched it was my brother was watching it uh, one time, upstairs, and so I just walked in and like we rewound this the scene where Swayze's giving his speech in in the yeah. auditorium. And, uh, he calls him the fucking Antichrist. Yeah, Donnie like comes up and like <laughs> smiles in front of the mic, you know, and he's like, he looks like he's out of it, and, yeah. like he just walks up yeah. and like just gives that weird smile and then starts going off on Patrick Swayze. Yep. Like that part is it's hilarious. A, it is a good. There's a lot of like really good comedy yeah. for, and it's like a, it's a dark movie. And I the mean, bunny, like I didn't understand the bunny. Yeah, it it comes around in the end. There's like an actual reason. So you do figure why he out... sees the bunny. Okay. Um. And again, like the time travel aspect is super weird in that, like, it's not, it's it's a lot like Primer, where it's like confusing. You don't really understand it, unlike you know, uh, Back to the Future, which they just like super explain it like super easily for you. Like, mm-hmm. it's a car that can travel through time, right? And um, so, I watch it, and the first time we watch it, it was more for the comedy, like the making fun of the fat Asian girl. I think one of them says. Like I hope you get molested. <laughs> we, exactly. We, yeah. It was terrible. But I didn't we, laugh there. We laughed hysterically at that. <laughs> oh, it was, hey Porky Pig, I hope you get molested, and we we laughed hysterically. Uh, the the what? the Antichrist part was hilarious. Um, just random parts throughout the movie were super funny. Hey, you want to know a, a quick nugget alert here? Sure. Uh, so the late Patrick Swayze was married to a woman named Lisa Nemi. Oh, nice. My aunt's name is Lisa. Her maiden name, obviously, Ooh. Nimi, which isn't that, isn't that, isn't that sweet? So you're like Scott, the old, it's like one Scott of two people. Married Patrick Swayze. It's like That's one cool. of two people that I I know that have my last name. Well, three, because there was some, there was someone in my elementary school that actually had my same last name. No re- is, uh, relations. No. Wow. And she bullied me too. What a killer? jerk. Yeah, she took my glasses. Put her all on time. glass. Let's do it. No, I just can't. I can't <laughs> do it. Glass. I can't you do it. Want that She's smarter copy? than me. <laughs> She's faster than me too. <laughs> She's smarter than fast. Um, but yeah, um, I guess another takeaway from the movie is it kind of um, it gave it gave us you know a glimpse at how versatile Gyllenhaal can be as an actor in such a young age. This is what like one of his thir- like a third, second, and third movie like major. Film, I guess it wasn't really. A he was young. Film, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was 2001 it came film. out, um, and uh, I don't know. It really just gave you an, um, an idea that this guy's going to actually be a solid actor. Um, yeah. So. And having Maggie Gyllenhaal play his sister, they really yeah. played off each other really well yeah, with sure. the, the sibling Wonder rivalry why. that was going yeah. on. Yeah. But yeah, so there's four. Uh, yep. So just do your five then, I guess. Yeah. Huh? What's your five? Oh, uh, we'll probably replace it. Yeah. <laughs> there's a good chance. <laughs> oh boy. My number five is Source Code. It's my ten. It's higher. Are you uh, serious? I really like Source Code. Oh, oh you like uh, Duncan Jones? I love though. Duncan Jones. That's all right. Why. I guess I have to go all the way to my eight because my number six is Prisoners, which is higher for Scott. <laughs> and my number seven was Jarhead. I knew so this is gonna happen. Uh, my number eight is Brothers. Okay, you're good. It's oh, higher on my list, you technically. Son of a wow. But I think we can talk about. I mean, as long as is it not in your top five, it's not in my top five. Oh, yeah, I think we should. He can take it. It's he my seven. It. Okay. He can take it. We're, I'm I'm going with it because I don't want to talk about Southpaw. <laughs> 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 um, so brothers, uh, when this when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was like, oh man, this looks awesome. Like three really good actors and wait, wait, are Natalie you being Portman. sarcastic? No, I was I was honestly like. I'm super excited for this movie because they even had uh, Tobey Maguire playing like a, a darker role after, like, almost immediately after Spider Man. Which is, which is, to me, would you would think like, and I don't know how what the, what range Gyllenhaal had before Brothers, but being a little bit more meaty than oh absolutely oh yeah Maguire yeah that's like, the point they're like maybe we can get some out of Maguire in this movie. yeah oh god and did they ever they did hell yeah. Um, I thought the movie was mediocre. I mean, it wasn't like a... I, there was an original version. This was a remake, wasn't it? Uh, it Something, I don't know. I don't know if it was be. a direct remake. I, I, I've i seen an older movie that's called right. Brothers, I but think, I'm not sure I if it's... Oh, no, no. You're thinking two brothers with the, the, the Tiger no. Cubs. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I definitely, that one, I'm definitely not. <laughs> I own it, man. It's a good movie. Well, um, the, the Tiger story is not the human one. Yes. <laughs> go, go on. Go on. <laughs> um, so... Going into it, I was really excited, and then coming out of it, I was 
kind of underwhelmed. Um, <laughs> Tobey Maguire did adequate. He wasn't like super great. Are you kidding me? I'm just Dude, saying that right now. He did really good in it. He, I mean, he okay. was nominated. For he what? was nominated for a Golden Globe. I think for an Oscar. He wasn't nominated. He was for definitely not nominated no, for an Oscar. Oh not for that one. God. It might have been a Golden Globe nominee. Okay. Well, either well, way, well, still, you I know, mean, we're still we're talking about Sylvester Stallone getting snubbed. I mean, that you could yeah. sit there and say that McGuire did, but I'm. Dude, I actually, I'm opposite of you. I went into this film, and it took me by surprise. Because I thought, dude, what what a simple idea of someone going to war and then the brother sneaking in. Which completely was not that. No, like, it was not that. He, Jill he and didn't Hall sneak and in Portman had kinda, a connection. It just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they were too. smoking they, wheat. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, they did think he was dead. But what he had to do to get back to the family was what's really nuts. Yeah, because and, he... Oh like, yeah, that, wasn't that, wasn't that I like, feel the like thing holding him up, like getting him through it? Yeah, was it was his family. His family. Yeah, and yeah. he was in the POW camp yeah. with this other guy who they basically said, "Kill or be killed," and yep. he took that thing and he beat the shit out of that guy oh, yeah. Yeah. and killed him. And then even in a, in a bigger twist, he has to go to that that guy's house and meet the wife and yep. the kid. I remember that. And the yeah. kid just crawling over to him, just staring at him, like Tobey Maguire being like, "Oh, what the hell?" Yeah. But when he's like running around in the backyard and stuff, it was funny to me at the time. But, <laughs> but I, yeah, it's just I mean, that that whole how he becomes so standoffish, and then not only that, but the the situation with the dad, Sam, Sam. Uh, oh yeah, 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 Sam. Oh, he's a good actor too, man. Sam Shepard. Sam Shepard, yeah, great actor. There's a documentary about someone and their friendship with Sam Shepard. I can't remember what it's called, but. Uh, Check it out, if, or comment if you know what it's called. Um, but Sam Shepard's disdain for um, Jake Gyllenhaal being mm-hmm. like the, you know, the... Kind of like the the screw-up. Yeah, 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 the screw-up, exactly. But yeah, man, that, that movie's intense. The only thing that brought me down was that little girl with a big-ass mouth. <laughs> only Scott thing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I don't about? remember that. <laughs> I don't either. She honestly. was in. Uh, she was in. Oh, I think I know who you're talking. Yeah, about. dude, you'll know if I, I don't. I remember this girl, Bailey Madison, is her name. Her. Oh. I immediately remember what you're talking about. She yeah, but she has a. She grew into her mouth yeah. then. Yeah, <laughs> she she's... grew into her mouth. Dude, go back to a younger <laughs> no, I, picture. I she's got a. I know she you're was talking annoying, about. I know. I know she like overacted. Like she. Well, like, yeah. Totally she always when... did too. Yeah. She always. She was, a, she was in a little girl. So she was in a great episode of like the Haunting Hour, like R.L. Stein's Haunting Hour, where she's a spoiled little brat and there's a doll and then the doll like slowly becomes her or some, something like that which is a great premise but she oversold everything and it was like I agree. Yeah. but it's kind of like every movie I've seen her and she oversold but yeah but I mean yeah. I'm, I'm not a hater I'm not a hater and I'm not a hater for children actors no, not like not Damon Taylor. and Taylor no yeah. you and Taylor I don't shit on them that much you didn't like Elliot from E.T. dude I've never seen E.T. That Whoa. was Taylor. Oh, yeah, it was Taylor. Holy crap. <laughs> What's anyway. the bigger offense? Never seen E.T. <laughs> eating it. Like, wow. I mean, I own the movie. I just haven't watched it. Yeah. All right. Good investment. Huh? Yeah. It was... <laughs> I hear that so much on Five dollars. So yeah, no, like a... Was it Blu-ray? No, it was DVD. Oh, I have DVD and I have two versions. The, the first the, the first comment on the IMDb page for Brothers is, did anybody know Toby could act yeah <laughs> question mark well that's that's what's the nuts thing about it i think he did a really i thought he did no, a really great job did, and i thought I the movie as a whole i own it it's on that it's it on might that just be my, my hatred for toby Maguire might be showing right now but <laughs> i think he's a pretty good actor um he, he can, he can i think do, he was the he worst part stuff. of the new great gatsby oh i'm sure that's probably yeah but you got you have to be into baz Lorman's. Oh um, God! Film. I hate him as an actor, as a director. Well, there you I go. Really That's like... why you probably hate it. His well, no, visuals. I, I hated it. He's like it Zach Schneider. Movie. Movie. I'm a big fan of Romeo and Juliet, though. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think so that weird. I really love that movie. <laughs> it, yeah. It almost made my top fifty. I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, I don't mind Romeo and Juliet, but I, like Moulin Rouge too. <laughs> yeah, like Moulin he's always got that over the top visuals. Like I said, he's like Zach Schneider, but um. Ugh. See. For like love. Right. Yeah. Stories. Yeah. A little bit more. uh depth to his stories yeah, but i actually bought, almost bought the great gatsby the other day i bought it for but it was like ten dollars from freaking half price and we all know how how you feel about that price yeah, yeah. i almost bought, <laughs> i wanted to buy uh um 
what was it, uh, Pan's Labyrinth too? They wanted ten dollars for just a regular Amray, and I was like, yeah. nope. Are you talking overpriced? Books? Yeah, 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 overpriced books. Yeah. yeah. Except for their books are modestly yeah, yeah, priced. Yeah, exactly. They're like their movies like, are terrible. Like we'll we'll get the we'll we'll make up the cost with the movies that we but sell. I, hey, this is a this is a tip for anybody that goes to half price books. Okay, I'm 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 sorry. I'm getting <laughs> on a tangent, hey, but you gotta know this. The second time we're if, hearing this. <laughs> if there's ever double copies of a movie, look at both of them because they're always priced separately. Yeah. They're always they're different every single time, I know, and I know you that. might get a better better version of that film for cheaper. It's weird. They used to do that when uh, Mega Media was still here too, at like different prices. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. Well, they they yeah. had thirty dollars on a world uh, War of the Worlds um, steelbook, really? which you can get for fifteen new at Target. I know. Anyways, enough of that. Uh, yeah, so that you. was your five four. That was all of our five four. Yeah, we're yeah. on three. Three and two. Here we go. Okay. End of watch three. I think I have it at three. Wait, yeah, no, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, Three? I called it out and it was higher. It's I higher. I do, but I'm actually gonna put end it of higher. watches. I'm changing mine. Huh? End of watches. No, higher? it was it was lower. On my oh, okay, list, so was... but you have it higher. I'm, I'm changing it to, to my number two. So why? <laughs> just to spite him? No, just because I'm looking at my number two and thinking. Okay, I didn't well, like that movie that can much. I see it? No, go fuck yourself. Nightcrawler then. Um, Nightcrawler's that would be my number, number two. <laughs> so. Bubble Boy? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> really? Is there any... What about... It, uh, I have Nightcrawl at 8, Jarhead at 9, Source Code at 10, and Bubble Boy at 11. You can I, take Source Code? I mean, I... No, no, you have it high. Someone three, has it higher. I have it at 3. It'd be the same spot. Oh, man. Would you rather put Bubble Boy? I like Bubble Boy. You might as well put Source Code so we can talk about it, because yeah, I had it at 5. All right, let's talk about... No, let's talk about Source Code, then. Let's talk about let's Source Code. Um, Jeez. Actually, let you guys take it away because it's literally my number ten. So <laughs> you guys talk about it because it's your higher than you. I, it's a good, it's a good time travel I, movie. I think speaking it's a of fantastic which, time I travel movie. I love me some time travel movies. I'm a, and this is a really good one. Yeah, remember you're gonna take that class, Damon? I was gonna take What's, that class. What class? class? Uh, Bill Gillard was teaching a time travel class during this what? Little, uh, winter. I that was the best class ever. Yeah, and then it was like I have to pay for it flat out. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Man. I laid into him in a drunken rage. He did. What him to, and, te- to not take him the and class? Alex? He wasn't right. even going to that school. Oh, you no! Just I was going. To... <laughs> I was going to uh, to Green Bay at that point. And he well, made it. He made a freaking comment about how that. I'm going to pay for it. That's what he said. Yeah, and then I was like, <coughs> my car broke down, and I had to get it fixed, and then it ran out of money. Well, you know what they say in those situations. Get a new car. Karma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, source code guys. Terrible pun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's. I think it's a well put together, well thought out, well, uh, pretty original time travel uh, story. Um, yes, and like I like we said before, I'm a, I'm a sucker for Duncan Jones movies. The I've, two that he's made. I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get into Moon more because you love it so much. I, I really. Do. Have, I, you just weren't. You weren't. Like, no, 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 I liked okay. it. I, I enjoyed Moon. I really it's did. Right there. Um, I was gonna say, don't you? But have I just it? it didn't grasp me. Though. Probably, and I kind of I kind of think of it the the way that Gravity hit me. And I'm it's not, the same with other people. Yeah, okay. Like gravity would be mediocre or okay to some people, but like I fucking love it was, it was a me good some movie, gravity. But if I was picking between gravity and moon, I'd pick moon. Hands yeah, down. and that, and I think that's that's where I that's where I kind of weigh the two. It's like moon. Yeah, I enjoyed it, um, and I thought what they did with the set was. Yeah. incredible and it's but a super low budget i mean for what yeah. kind of what they're doing with it, it's yeah. very low budget especially but duncan I mean, jones david bowie's son um did you know that no yeah no. duncan jones is david bowie's wow. son so he has, david bowie. he has skrill all over and you could have made more money with that movie but... david bowie's package in a uh, labyrinth <laughs> <laughs> it's probably what kind of magic. magic spell to choose or to use <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> Put down the alcohol, Scott. Come on. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's source... seven up. I was gonna say, <laughs> I haven't even poured that oh, in there. Yeah, yet. No, I know. I was giving you, giving you a hard uh, time. Me and Rum. Um. Okay, <laughs> that was weird. No, it's not even me. Uh, it's a story I'll tell you afterwards. Anyways. Um. <laughs> oh, Big Daddy. <laughs> huh? Big Daddy. No. Oh. No, it's literally a story <sighs> that happened to me this last week with Rum, and it. You ended up drinking some? No. Broke edge. Everybody, everybody else on Where the cruise. Where were you and we were breaking edge. <laughs> <laughs> I literally sang that to someone in high school. He did. I was there. <laughs> Just don't state, the, don't state the name. Okay. What, state it right now. We, this whole section can get cut. That's an M. Remember uh, Bobby Hill's girlfriend? 
I know who it is. You just text me? Yeah. No. Well, just, yeah, give me your phone. I'll write it. <laughs> Keep going. Source code. Keep talking about source code. Um, yeah. I mean, before Edge of Tomorrow, this was like the most creative uh, go back. Us. You should have just said your ex girlfriend. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you dated her. Yeah, he dated no, her in I high school. For like three years. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I don't no, know. That's funny, though. I forgot, man. Oh, well, Bobby no. Hills? Yeah. Yeah, no. That guy looks like. The dude she dated after me oh, okay. looked exactly like a giant Bobby Hill. Oh, okay. damn it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could just cut that whole section out. No, nah, um, we're good. <laughs> no. Uh, what do you got for source totally code? Totally no. No, she never listened to it. Who cares? What do you got for source code? Go ahead. I'm. Wait. Um, I, I, uh, Michelle Monahue. I actually, I, I think. How you say your name? Super. Uh, I thought so. Oh, I. I'm I've right. never been able to figure it out. Oh. I'm pretty <laughs> pronunciation. I'm looking. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure because Dominic Monahue, and I think they have the same last name. Okay. And I know Dominic Monahue. Dominic Monaghan. <laughs> Is it Monaghan? I thought it's Monahue. I thought that's how you the, pronounce the it. The Hobbit guy. Yes. It's Monahue. He's the lost guy, not the Hobbit guy. Come on. Um, That's also true. Yeah. She. If we're going to choose a role for him. Um, oh, dude. She, I think she's beautiful. And I I think she's actually a pretty not decent relevant. actress. Huh? <laughs> Just go ahead. Um, but, um, but yeah, the premise is, 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 is awesome. The execution is well done. Gyllenhaal kills it. Obviously, um, as and, usual. And, yeah, like you said, I'm a sucker for sci-fi movies. Sci-fi all the time. Like, um, um. So, There's a G in there, boys. Monahue. That's why I was saying that it didn't sound type right. Type it in at like Google. I swear to God, it's Monahue. Okay. Well, you're probably right. I I've, I've only ever heard it as Monaghan. And 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 or I'm Monaghan. usually horrible at pronouncing names. I don't know. So this is a win for me if yes. I'm right. Sure. No, you're probably right. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. What do you, you have anything to uh, back off that? The Just... only problem I really had in the movie because it was it was a super interesting movie to me. Uh, like I said, it was a lot like Edge of Tomorrow, but less yeah. war and aliens and more like the real world stuff, kind of. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. same train, but like, like a terrorist plot instead of yeah, for like sure. a super sci-fi movie. It was like still based in it's kind of some reality. Ground, some grounds reality, yeah. I guess. Um, the only real problem I had was the ending because it was very yeah, like it was very happy. Yeah, and Looks... that's just and the same thing with Edge of Tomorrow. Now I've yeah. connected those two movies that they had very happy endings. Yeah, and they both kind of annoyed me in that sense. Yeah, but otherwise, Scott, you have anything to add to it? I mean, I mean it's on number 10. Yeah. But was, that's probably only because there's like, what, 15 Jill and All movies anyways? And yeah. I don't even know if I've seen like a, a copy that I've actually had to plug into my Blu-ray player. I might have just seen it on TV or like a page. I, I, I don't know. I, and I could have been spacing, but I did like the time travel idea. Um, didn't realize it was Duncan Jones until recently, so... Yeah. I guess I like it a little bit more because of that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's like my. That's like the driving force of me going to see Warcraft is because it's Duncan Jones doing it. Oh really? Yeah. He's doing Warcraft. Yeah. All right. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm like, all right, let's do it. Well, okay. So wow, this is a big mess. So that was. Oh, I have, th- I have one more thing. Oh, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Jeremy Siski once said that uh, source code was more creative, and better than Inception. So, okay. take that as it is. Trace, thoughts? I'm not like, <laughs> I, mean, I like Inception a lot. It's a good movie, but it's not like... Alright, get out. I'm not like Blake about it. Or, I've gotten Monaghan and Monaghan. Monaghan? Monaghan. Monaghan so and Monaghan. Monaghan. I think it's wrong. I, think I think it's probably Monaghan. is. It's Yahoo Answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm really trying here. Let's <laughs> <laughs> redeem ourselves. I don't know. I think Inception might be mildly overrated. Thank you. I think at least I can't do this anymore. Extent, <laughs> okay, an dude. Extent, I mean, yes, it was very creative. And That's all I I'm said. I'm a big, well, okay, well, big how about this, fan. So. How about this, Damon? Um, I didn't mean it. I didn't want it to make. It. I, <laughs> I was so like, I'm I so angry. Day, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna reach over the table and hit you. I yeah. swear. <laughs> I really do mean this. And like, okay, Damon. <laughs> Instead of Damon. Um, how about this, Damon? Uh, <laughs> you piece of garbage. What? How do you explain the ending? Do you think it was all a dream for? What's that? What's DiCaprio's uh, character's name? Hobbs. Hobbs. Yeah. Leo Hobbs. No, I'm kidding. No, it was, it was something else. Call him Hobbs. What do you do? You think it was his dream, the whole time? 
You mean at the end? Do I think he was awake, or I think he was still in pur- purgatory? Yeah, I think he was awake. But it was just a dead but end how thing. his his kids come in and say, "Dad, we're making a and we're making a, a house on the cliff." And then that kind of like uh, because before that what, point, I guess that I I don't know if I'd ever actually heard them say that, but I watched like a s- screen rant thing. Okay, I don't think I've. I, never mind. I'm losing my track now. Um, it's okay. We're putting you on the spot. Uh, uh, I was saying, oh, they had never shown the kids' faces before. Like, every time he was in a dream, they had never shown the kids' faces. And then at the end of the movie, they do. Which leads me to believe, what the hell are you doing? I'm he's got a, a bingo. He's got a bingo. <laughs> <laughs> got a bingo. Okay. Go okay. ahead. My thing is, is that... Every time we even see the viewer sees uh, an image of his kids, the same exact image, always, and they're always in a dream, and they're always facing away from him. So when he finally gets there, they're in the same position and position that they were in throughout his entire dreams, True. and then they finally turn. So m- maybe that is a sign that he's trapped there, and that's kind of an indication, especially in his mind, that, well, I'm trapped here. It's almost kind of mirroring what his wife was going through while she was trapped there. Yeah. Um, or like. What was the wife's name? Mod. Yeah. Or something like. I think it was something like that. Uh, I haven't watched the movie in a while. I need to watch it. Either way. Bother me. Um. So what do I go in my two? Yeah. We just talked about Inception. It's not even on. Yeah, topic. we're not even on topic anymore. <laughs> uh, number two, <laughs> Prisoners. Okay. You got it. I have it lower, but yes, yeah, I have it on my list. You have it lower? Yeah. It was lower. Yeah. Okay. He had it right. five, I have it six. Um, superbly shot from Roger Deakins. Um, I think this film really resembles a lot of other works from Denny V. I just don't... I say it that way because I don't know how to say his name. Denny so, V. <laughs> Denny Vinui? Or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I, um, I wasn't going to try so it. But it's such an intricate uh, story using the title to explain the plot of the film. Um and Jake G is superb, and Hugh Jackman gives a stellar performance. You know, sort of as this father that clamps down on his children for safety, um, but in a twist of irony, um, ends up having his daughter swiped right from underneath his nose, mm-hmm. which I thought I thought is is great. Um, and they they do not they do not shy away uh, from clo- um, closing in or sh- you know zooming in on that cross that hangs around his mirror. Yeah. So you know, the, I mean, and he's saying prayers and stuff, and what this guy goes through to just completely change his, I don't know, mental state mm-hmm. to find his daughter. And some could look at that as, hey, I would do the same thing, and some would be like, well, this is an innocent man that they right. let go that the cops already investigated. And actually, it was a, it was a heated debate at um, after I watched the movie and. It was basically, would you do this? Would you go out and grab that guy and beat the hell out of him until he told you something? Because technically he did tell him something. Yeah. Wasn't it's he... just that Hugh Jackman didn't understand what he was saying because yeah. it was all, it, it didn't make any sense. Wasn't, yeah, because he was Paul mentally Daniels handicapped. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, he was like, he had like an IQ of like a 10-year-old yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So he didn't have any clue of what Dano was saying, mm-hmm. but... So the, on the other hand, the obvious choice is to throw him in a shower and rig it so that it like burns. Him. burns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that. that I <laughs> mean, tough. it's that or I mean, you got to understand that the dude is desperate. I know. But, I know. Uh, but I mean, the the way that the script is written to have those themes and um, you know uh, those undertones of uh, of religion and how it's used bad and poorly to how it's used well, and I think. Throughout that and just that theme of sort of the, that religious aspect is why that film had to end the way it did. And I know it's, it's what, three years old? That movie came out in 2013. 2013, I'm almost yep. positive. Yeah. yeah, you're on the ball. Um, and I didn't see it until just yesterday, yeah. so I'm sure there's out people out there. And I don't want to ruin the ending for anybody, but the way it had to end was... To me, it could have even ended a little bit more harsh than that, oh, yeah. um, which I actually wish it did. Because there was a little bit of hope. Yeah, but there was a also some irony to it. Yeah, you know the way, the way 
he's trying to get recognized is how I mean he's using the rape whistle. Yep. And you know, good luck, man. But um, oh, I totally forgot the ending. It just came to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like, but I'm I, like, okay, yeah. But yeah. I think throughout the entire cast, I think is is they you know well acted. Yeah. Um, I think the under, I mean, the, the unsung hero in this is the editing in the film. The way uh, oh. they slowly creep in, you know, to that tight close up, or the way they back out to, you know, a beautiful wide shot. It, it's it's done so well that it's it's described with one word, and that's subtle. Yeah. You don't realize that there's edits taking place. But really, you have to realize, too, that an editor's job is basically you're rewriting and retelling the story. Um, and so it to come out so, I mean, technically, flawlessly, and the only the only really dig, the big dig I have on the film is the fact that I figured out who was behind it all within, I'd say, probably halfway through. Oh, really? Did. And I didn't want that to happen. But you know your mind's racing in movies like this, Especially, these thrillers? Yeah, oh, You're trying to think yeah. of every aspect. Yeah. And when you get down to one that would be more realistic than all the others, um, then you have to kind of think, well, oh, I figured it out, but I was so okay with just, you know, reinvesting myself into the story mm-hmm. and in forgetting about it. So then at the end, I was like, oh. But even still today, after I watch the movie, I'm still trying to put together, um, you know, plot, characters, um, all sorts of things, just, just to make sure, like, because, you know, Denny V has, even in his other films... He's got like these, these webs going all over the place, and it's a, it's a really, it's a, he always likes to tell stories that are that make you think, you know. Oh yeah. And I thought Prisoners was gonna be like sit back and just enjoy what, what they're showing you, but in the end, it's like holy crap. So that necklace was connected with this person, and this person was unsure of what happened to this person with the necklace, and it was like oh my god, it was good. I, yeah. I really enjoyed yeah. it. No, definitely, I completely agree. Um, I think a shout out is I, I know he wasn't the lead in the in the film, but Jalen Hall's performance in this movie was oh, yeah. like like I, I noticed like because his his the whole detective he was kind of he kind of pushed it too as a detective. Mm-hmm. Um and the the character, um, you would see him like he would blink a lot. Yeah. Like, oh like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like, he had that nervous tick. Like that nervous tick and I thought Jill and Hall, and I, 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 I think that was. I, I'm almost positive that was like a Jill and Hall edition. Like, oh wait, I don't think that, that's that that's that tick. Give yourself a, a tick. I think he just did yeah. it, and I, and I thought it was very well done. Mm-hmm. Because it, there's so, always a fine line, and I think about this almost on a daily basis. It's like, what is directing? What is acting? You don't know unless you watch behind the scenes. Yeah. And if you don't know that, then it's always you're always just saying. Oh, the directing's so good because of so and so. The acting's so good because of so and so. But I think this is a point where you can see, um, I guess, regardless of who said what, yeah. the fact that he could pull it off yeah. and make it seem so real. Because I have I have seen people with with ticks, you know, yeah. like nervous ticks or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and they they do it without themselves even realizing it. Yeah. And the way he does it is is really well done. Right. Oh, for sure. And it's and it's subtle and it goes back to like the yeah. whole movie and the whole editing process. And that 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 end scene when he is driving through the traffic in the rain. Oh my god, that yeah. was so suspicious. With the with the blood getting in his oh eyes. Oh my god, that, that was, was like yeah. it literally was giving me like like I was having an anxiety attack. I was watching like this. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, no, it was it was great. But I also I, I made sure to 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 write that Gyllenhaal's portrayal of a cop with nothing but everything to lose. Because one of the first things we figure out about him is well, a he's by himself in a Chinese restaurant on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. But b after he takes on the case, he's never failed. And that's why his character is so driven. But yeah. you also find out the little backstory you have of him is that he grew up with a shitty childhood. Yeah. And so him, he gets so invested into all of these things that it's, I mean, it's it's just a testament to the story yeah. and the way it was acted and then brilliantly directed as well. Um, and then shot, of course, stunningly yeah. by Roger Deakins, who is 0 for 13, as we, yeah. <laughs> we mentioned before. 
which is just a travesty. But, um, you know, dark, somber, you know, rain, um, just it's all, the, you know, these these gray palettes and everything like that. It's it just fantastic. Yeah, it was just really well done. And I mean, it to me, I look at it as one of those films that are done more so with um, with the colors. And maybe that's just what sticks out rather than playing with the frame. And then obviously I said, you know, the, the camera movements too are yeah. done really well to really heighten up the the tension in the film. But yeah, I mean, Prisoners is, is pretty sweet. And, and one thing that I always judge characters on, or actors I should say, is in a movie that's a drama and it's it involves crying, can they really cry? Right. There's one show that's on ABC that everyone cries flawlessly you know what i'm Which, talking about uh, no uh Grey's anatomy no no Scandal. it's um anything by shonda rhimes because no. everyone in those movies art shows cry like all the time Is once it? upon a time Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. and they cry cool. well. They're they're really good criers in that show. That is a, that is a telltale. Like, if you can't convince like convince me that you're legitimately crying in the movie, like, right? It kind of takes away from it. Really well, the does. mom the mom was on those insomniac pills, right? Yeah. And there was one she was breaking down and crying, and I don't know if it was like a dry heave. You ever had those cries where it's like, uh, you know, like you're just trying to yeah. cry, and you can't get anything out. But then she flips over, and then I can see tears. But Hugh Jackman was really good with it. Oh yeah, he was um, killing it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was excellent with his tears. So, yeah. with that, I just I guess I give it two thumbs up. <laughs> good. That was my two. So we're at three with you guys. Yeah, but we did source code was source your codes three. Source code was our three. Yeah. So well, what's my your... three? So my two is Nightcrawler. I have it. Uh, where the hell was it? Um, eight, for me. Eight, eight I switched me. it uh, to three, so so we can talk about right. it. Yeah, we can Let's talk about so it. So your three and two are basically gone. Yeah, wait, no. What's your what's your no? His two. He you haven't your two is not gone. Wait, didn't you move something to two? I moved something higher to two. It was something you had. end of watch. Yeah, end of watch. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say okay. We yeah, we'll, talked about okay. That. Well, so we'll talk about yours and then talk about yours. Well, we can because we, we can both do. Uh, Night yeah, Crawler. we can do Nightcrawler. All right. Um, um, That's funny because most of what I have to say is stuff that you like said after I talked to you about the movie. <laughs> me? Yeah, because you you had said something that kind of stuck with me, and I I never say went it. back to actually yeah, like I, don't what, yeah, what, I never went back to actually check. But you said that you were pretty sure that Jake Gyllenhaal, when he was on screen, never blinked through the no, entire yeah, movie. He did it. He did not blink. And then this might have been just me because I only saw the movie once, once and a half. Um, yeah, but. Um, <clears throat> He didn't blink, and I think, hands down, in my opinion, this is his best acting per- per- performance in a film. Without a doubt, I think it would be a lot higher if we did. I, yeah, if we did performances yeah, by Joan sure. Hall, it, it would, would be between, it would be yeah. between this one and. But, and but I'm just saying, like, this is his like he embodied that character so well, and so like I mean, like obviously at first you kind of like liked him somewhat. I mean, it was still you could like, tell he was a sketchy person, yeah, but you were like, but you almost felt bad, like yeah. you almost pitied him in a way. Yeah, yes. exactly. And yeah. then his character got stronger and more shady throughout oh, the yeah. movie. Oh yeah, just like just like, getting all this power, you know, yeah, like, the power of of being there and 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 getting there first to to the extent that he would go to to have a story. Yep. To shoot for for this uh this this news uh station was just i mean i thought i mean you can say what you will with the story i mean it's pretty pretty straightforward there's really not no um a whole lot of you know i guess conflict going on in the film other than him you know just trying not to get caught basically i mean doing all these weird things yeah but um but uh, the the film looked great um i forget the director again it's i think he's a one-off director he hasn't really done much um here, you talk while I find his name. Okay. Um, I thought... Dan Gilroy. Well, that was quick. Yeah, my phone is just... This internet. <laughs> <laughs> this internet. He might be a writer, right? He's mostly a writer, too. I was about that's to, his only directed film. I was about yep. to, I to compliment is, the he, writing for a second. Yeah. Mainly the... Because the, the story, again, as we said, wasn't like... You were correct. It's all super just... creative or like... A, <laughs> I think it's a creative idea to, 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 to see it was, the But it But it wasn't of, like... There wasn't a lot of twists yeah, and turns. Not it was int- pretty just... Not intri- it's not an, as intri- like, okay, for going from prisoners to Nightcrawler. Yeah. No, but, but then that's why we have 
different films. If it was all the, the same, we, oh, why the sure. hell would we Absolutely. like? We wouldn't be sitting here making a podcast, a movie podcast, yeah. then yeah. because no, that's what we want to highlight films that have you know. Yeah, and I think the the highlight of this film is is the character Jalen Hall is playing, and I think that's what the point of the film is. You're supposed to see this guy like decline almost into being a sociopath to like the next level like um yeah he definitely starts off as like well, a, he starts off he, he starts off as a sociopath and then at, by the end of it almost like upgraded himself into like almost a full-blown blue. psychopath yeah but, but like, i think also what we have to remember about it is the fact that this this news um will buy the shit from him yeah and I think if, yeah, they're if not, you they're remember, not exactly I don't know if morally... you guys remember Sidney Lumet or Sidney Lumet, whatever, however you pronounce yeah, his name. Trust me. Um, his uh, film Network. I never saw from it, the but... '70s is mainly about you know kind of if it bleeds it re you know yeah, it yeah. leads all that kind of stuff. And they were saying how much that film is so ahead of its time. So I look back. Um, after watching Nightcrawler and thinking, wow, man, that really reminds me of Network in a really different way. But the fact that they want blood, they want gore, they want the lives of innocent people in the the forefront of their 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 stories. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, you could talk about that in a way, too, because honestly, who isn't sickened by the fact that it's always about which cop shot this person or which, which African-American killed this yep. white person? It's... If you killed someone, you're gonna get on the news. You yep. know, if you blow someone up, you're gonna get on the news. Yep. If you died defending your country, you're you might get two seconds. Yeah. That's about it. You yeah. know, because no one wants to hear that. It's all about drama and all that stuff. So, oh yeah, yeah I think sure. the film paints, speaks a lot to that paints too. The media, oh, yeah, yeah. but I, but I also the decline, of the, the character getting, I mean, obsessive about it. I mean, to the point where, you know, he's he, almost like. Like uh, what did he he like? He blackmailed almost... Rene Russo's character. Well, he is, yeah, he did like, that. But I mean, the he is the... what he reports on. He's basically yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was setting up the events that he was going and like taping. Like yeah. he, well, the he did something finale, with like yeah, the... yeah. Oh, the gun, the shootout in the restaurant. Yeah. was about him. Mm-hmm. Um, but even when you get that shot, when he sh- when he when he shoots that he shoots him right. He shoots no, that guy. He doesn't do it. He set it up. Wait, maybe did he? His partner, the Indian guy. Yeah, right? I don't remember. I don't remember if he shot him, or like he had it. I don't know. I don't think he shot him. I really don't think. He I shot thought him. he killed him. I thought he shot he him. He did. I mean, the reason he died was because of him. But um, but then I, he goes over to him and then just, just puts films, his camera on him, like he's just while he's dying. He's, he's gone, like, dude. Yeah, yep. yeah, he's gone. Yep. I don't know. I, I think that's that's what stuck with me. The characterization of of Lewis Bloom's character, uh, yeah. the character of Lewis Bloom. And his yeah. decline in the throughout the movie Agreed. and the betrayal of of Jalen Hall, um, it really escalated him on my uh, on on why I I like watching him as an actor. Really, yeah, he, oh yeah, he's a I, solid like underrated almost. Kind oh of. for sure. I mean, he's a big he's an A lister actor, but he's like I don't know. He, I don't feel like he gets thrown in conversations of of top actors nowadays as much as he should. Yeah, so. um, I thought the dialogue in the movie was also fantastic. Oh yeah, um, goes to the writing. Right? Yeah, sure. just kind of thinking about the when he was selling his bike to get the camera. Yeah, like the the negotiation, and he was just like spouting off all this knowledge about bikes, which was probably complete bullshit. But he was just like trying so hard, and it was the flawless. Charisma. What do they the say? Knowledge is power. You know, yeah. like if he if he's now, I mean, people eat that shit up. Yeah. You know, I could sit here and tell you. Oh yeah, like, I could sit he, here and tell you that I've made four feature films and I have an IMDb rating of four out of five stars. Yeah. People might start li- listening to me a little bit more than <laughs> I could but be completely you, lying. But if yeah. you have the charisma to <clears throat> to back that up yeah. and to it make people like believe yep. you just just with the words that you say. It's, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely the, the dialogue the and mixture with Hall's performance was yeah. fantastic. <clears throat> All right, so your two. Then? Your two. My two was End, uh, of watch. End of Watch. Nice. Which I think is underrated definitely yes. an underrated movie uh found not i guess not found footage but like it's the handheld it's like borders yeah footage. it was definitely like a, it's, it's, it's the ba- handheld uh, like camera kind of thing paul greengrass esque yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah definitely but david Ayer does a, i think he does a fantastic job incorporating the fact that Hall's character is doing a graduate um class about yes. filmmaking 
to tie it all in. That's how we get up close and personal yep. with these characters, which is absolutely awesome. But go ahead. It's your it's higher than yours. Yeah. Um this was a movie that definitely made me really like Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, and I I told you yesterday that I was mixing around my top 4 cuz I wasn't sure where I wanted everything to put. Right. So I moved this one up over Nightcrawler cuz I think story-wise it's a little more interesting to me at least i mean it's not it's fair yeah i i definitely like movies about people's like psychology and how like the mind works but this movie was in my opinion better i don't know probably not actually better i'm folding on my opinions now um <laughs> yeah dude i'm like i'm like that's how like i said is this in is your head. like it, they're so close that i'm well, like i'm backtracking but well, let me help um, you go ahead no what no you go ahead saying? you please please um I think the pairing between Michael Pena and Gyllenhaal in this film is completely better than Russo and Gyllenhaal oh, and Nightcrawler. Yes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, Pena has so much more charisma and character than... And look, I love Renee Russo. And, I mean, I haven't seen her in anything since, well, at least Lisa Weapon 4 to Nightcrawler. <laughs> yep. so, um, but I think this... The, the biggest thing about this film is basically you have these two characters, Okay. And the nice thing about End of Watch and what David Ayer did with writing this movie was the fact that we get to know um, these two characters, and you go to you go to the the weddings yep. and you go to the birthday parties and you hear them talk about their girlfriends and wives and hear them talk like they're. Yeah. The best of friends. Right. Yeah, because they, they are. You get attached to these two characters. Oh, absolutely. And then what unfoils because oh, of... Absolutely heartbreaking at be, the end. What then. unfoils, you know, unfolds because of what they're digging up is, you know, it's tragic. Although I will say the end of the movie has stole a song from We Were Soldiers. Okay. It didn't fit, dude. It didn't okay. fit. It didn't fit. I'm, t- I'm just telling you, like yeah. that song that they played at the end, it didn't work for me. And then it goes back to I have like uh, I have Pulp Fiction uh, soundtrack, but like the deluxe edition. Yeah. So I have a CD with an interview. Well, actually, it's just Tarantino just talking, <laughs> and like him getting upset about the fact that uh, the song "Stand by Me" plays in the movie "Stand by Me," and him saying like. That's that's in Mean Streets. Hello, you know, like it came first. It gets first dibs on that song, and it's weird because that's kind of stayed in the back of my mind. And because we were soldiers, song played in this song, like the way either, yeah. the way that's they true. used it in We Were Soldiers is them running to, uh, you know, do you hear? You know what I'm talking about? That song. No. Okay. Well, it's like it, I don't even know what the guy says in this, this song. Um, but it's like this slower song, and all these dudes, uh, we were soldiers about Vietnam, yep. if yep. you don't know, um, they're all running towards uh, the helicopters to get on and go and go into battle. So at the end, you know what happens. Have you seen End of Watch? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you know what happens at the end. Yeah. Well, yes. now they play this song that has a completely different meaning in a different movie, which has stuck with me for so long. So it's a conflict in your mind. Yeah, yeah it no, took totally it took me out that. of it took me out of it. I was like, I don't have any examples it was almost for uncomfortable it. for me to sit there. Like, you couldn't just do some like sweet instrumentals or right, something. Right. But yeah, no, I totally I can totally concur with that. I mean, I don't have any examples right off the top of my head. But like, well, that's they happened, used, that's happened to they, me before in films. So Man like, of Steel used in the in their trailer. They used the song that Gandalf fell to in Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring. Is it really? Completely out of place. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? You're gonna you're gonna steal the song. From you know one of the greatest characters in the Lord of the Rings trilogy yep. that he dies to, you're gonna steal that and put it in Man of Steel. Like, I love the song, but it just doesn't fit. Yeah, no, I hear you. But I mean, that was my only gripe about the movie. I yeah. enjoyed oh, it, and I, I thought... love that they. I love that they don't hold back because yes. you think the opposite of what actually happens. But... Yeah, you you're definitely going into that movie thinking they're both gonna. No, I'm gonna stop talking because that's a spoiler. <laughs> well, um, it, but it's cleverly shot, like yeah. I said, with you know the the shaky cam, uh, and you know it's rugged. Yeah, and then dirty, they switched gritty. between like an actual handheld and then like the the body yes, cams, the body yeah, cams. which I thought was cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, almost it's, like just they like strapped GoPros onto them. We're like, here, go film a movie. It's um, it's also really revealing with you know obviously, 
Um, when did this film come out? Uh, well, not too long ago. It a few was, years ago. It was post-2010. 2012. <laughs> okay, so it's still relevant, um, especially with all the cop, you know, real-world problems going on. And it kind of really dives into the world of of these Los Angeles police, to, you know, uh, officers. Oh, yeah, and, they're definitely... And how, like, how hard it is to be a, a police officer. I'm sure that resonates into real life at some, uh, for, for, for some police officers. Yeah, so especially I think in it's that very, area. I don't know, I think it's very good, obviously aside from the main plot of the movie, just, just the characterizations of, of these police officers and the location that they're at. I thought it was well done. And I don't know how far-fetched the story would be with them, you know, sort of digging up the Mexican cartel yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah, it was a bit weird just because of the fact that they were like, they were just like, but they had to make it big. They were officers, and they were they were doing kind of like detective, detective work. work. Yeah, yeah, and it felt. Well, a little I think out that of was place. the driving force behind Gyllenhaal's character, which yes. in the end ends up screwing him. Yeah, yeah. Um, big time. Well, yeah, because he definitely. Well, I'm just trying not to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but who knows? Maybe you don't really know what I'm saying, or do you? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if that would be big enough to them put then put a hit on those two guys, but either way, I think I feel like you could probably do less. It was intense. The and... It was intense. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's that's a good pick at uh, what two? So yeah. we're yeah. going to ones now. Which I feel like me and you might have the same one then. Yeah, because there was someone. One. You already know my one. I think I do. I think you told me last night. What is this shit? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna pick uh, Enemy actually as Ooh, my number one. Which I haven't. Seen, I watched so. it over um, a course of two days, so basically watched like eighty percent of the film in one day, and then finished the last, the last you know twenty percent in I think the next day. So, um, but the film is actually a riddle for the viewers to solve, in a very very interesting riddle. It's 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 intense, but. Gyllenhaal seemingly plays two characters, but as the story unfolds, is he really two people? Um, and the great thing about this film is that you have to pay attention to every detail of what's going on, because as you're trying to connect, is he dual personality or is he two literally, literally people. literal people? Yeah. Everything that goes on in every single frame of the film has something to do with the story and what they're trying to tell you. So it's it's... It's trying to connect it all at the end, and, and it's. I'm still thinking about the movie right now, <laughs> um, but. You know, I would love I would love to go into more detail detail about it, but I think this is a film that everybody needs to see. I think yeah. it's a detail that everybody. Needs to work out themselves, um, but it's. There's a ton of spiders in it. Yeah. No, I know. I saw. I watch a lot of top ten watch mojos, um, and I seen I've seen that scene the, the giant the, one, the one at the end. Yeah, okay, the yeah, but end. even though even so, just so that out one, of context it the comes in the beginning. There's one in the beginning. There's one in the middle. There's one at the end, and then even you know just scattered around is spider webs, and it's all used, um, the way he wants it to be used. It's not like, yeah, it's just oh randomly he looks up and now there's. It looks like there's a web there's above a him. Here's a meaning. It's a metaphor. And yeah, so I think there's a theme that puts women front and center in the story, and that's I would love to go into more detail about this, but I feel like um, it would have helped if me and him had seen this movie, so we could yeah. go off of that. But yeah, no, um, it's Tell definitely I've heard about it, and, I've, and I, I, I know I mean some details of the film. Uh, obviously, it's just the main premise of the dual identity. Um, thing, but um, which no, no. I mean, I caught on to it. Uh, if if you don't understand the movie after you watch it, there is a really good breakdown, which I uh, almost agree wholeheartedly about. Um, this dude Chris Stuckman. I don't know if you heard of Chris Stuckman on YouTube. I feel like I've heard. Of, I feel like you've talked uh, about him before. <laughs> Damn, have I really? I don't know. Damn. I feel like you have. Um, but uh, but he he does a breakdown of it, and I, I I honestly agree. There were some things that he helped shed light and like i said I, I couldn't watch it on an actual blu-ray so i had to watch it online which kind of took away from it yeah. but i still really love the film i'm still thinking about it but um yeah, there was a point in there which i actually disagree with maybe something that he says but i i'll have to w go back and watch is when 
Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays a history professor, goes in, and I could be just because I have a, a shoddy version of the film on the computer, he goes into the classroom, there's nothing on the chalkboard, there's nothing, there's nobody in the class, but then, once we get this shot of him, uh, this profile shot of him, now all of a sudden there's just stuff on the back, on the blackboard, and it looks like it's like all connecting stuff, but... It's weird. It's I will have to watch it again. Maybe I took it out of context. Maybe I miss I well, saw something. But um, the way he talks about dictatorships and stuff repeating, and then all of a sudden the film actually starts repeating itself. It's it's pretty good. And I think there is. Uh, I think there might be a you know a I guess sort of like a singular meaning to the film. But that's that. I mean, yeah. Right, am I up? Number one. I think we're both up because we both have the same movie. Are you sure we do? Zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. Number one Zodiac. All right, I have it because I have to leave pretty soon. I have Zodiac what do you four. Got? Work. What? Okay, you t- you say your piece then, real quick. Um, it's been a long time since I watched this movie. Two thousand seven came out. I've, yeah, I think one, that's the last time I saw it. I think <laughs> I watched it like two thousand ten or something, but um, I like the thriller aspect of the movie. I like the open kind of endedness of the movie where they're you're they're pretty sure they got the right guy, but there's like questions that are obvious like obvious yeah. questions that are arise that arise that yeah. are like is he the killer? I don't know. Uh that kind of stuff. Cuz I mean in real life people legitimately don't think that he was the killer. So right. They did a good job of leaving that open at the same time like hinting that he's probably the killer but still leaving it open enough where they're like he might not be like because we honestly don't know yeah he never admitted it and i mean or anything um performances from gyllenhaal and uh robert Robert downey Downey jr Jr. were fantastic i forgot about ruffalo (laughs) taylor ruffalo wheeler yeah oh yeah uh cemetery uh, pet cemetery 2 he was in (laughs) and er and er well yeah and and, uh Mm -hmm. yes um but yeah, no, I mean... I was about to say, will it to me, Riggs? <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. That's um, not the right movie. Well, um, like you said, suspense, thriller, who does it better than David Fincher? Um, he knows, he's one of my favorite directors. It's great. Um, he's a great filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. He, he, his, I mean, and this, and this film totally tells, I mean, it's got a, a noir feel to it, too. Um, yeah. That I, I, and I'm sucker for those as well. Yeah. Um, you know what I would love to see? Like, this is a side note, um, but I would love to Dude, see... you're not like, allowed to do that in this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we I haven't done that at all. I would love to see, like, an HBO or Showtime special of, like, like a detective... Like, almost like a Fincher take on a true detective or something, or, like, a suspense thriller. There was someone talking oh about... God, uh, am- they amazing. said they wanted to see a Fincher Batman. Oh, that would be even... That would be pretty intense. I mean, he does thriller. He does, does like, detective stories yeah. very well. So yeah. I think that a Batman... Well, I think the, be the so best good. thing about Zodiac is the fact that it has that based on a true story aspect right. yeah. where it sub it submerses you so much into the story that immediately when you get home, you're, you're online. Looking you're, yeah, you're, you're looking it up. You're the getting, Zodiac killer. You know, Ted online. Cruz is a Zodiac killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying, no, though? Totally. Like there, I and I, I think again another film that is well acted, well directed, but you can see the way this guy uses film. You know when the the um the the barber in uh, the barber in Gran Torino. I bet you like five people will understand what I'm saying. Sure, but sure, that, sure. that actor, when he goes and like crosses his legs and next thing you know, like you get the response of, you know, Ruffalo and then Anthony Edwards and then that other dude, I don't remember who the third yeah. investigator is. And they all look like, what? this is, this is weird. And then he just starts going off on this. Yeah, I had knives, but yeah. I kill I killed a chicken or something like that. It's like, it's good work, oh, yeah. man. That like Zodiac was able to reach me at a, I was seventeen and then I didn't think and anything of film. It's you know? a long movie too. It's a yeah. real... two uh, two hours and thirty seven minutes. Yeah, I mean, for, I'm guessing to, that was exactly. <laughs> was exactly. I knew it. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say I was like, wow, you are good. No, so I mean, it's, I guess it's not as long as I thought it was, but still, 
Uh, it's it's, it's uh, um, one scene that uh, that literally, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like imprinted in my the brain. The most dangerous it's, game scene? When Joan Hall's in the basement? Yes, I, yes, yes, yes. Oh my yes, god. Yes. Like, my anxiety is off the I was, chart. Yeah, I was literally scene. just thinking yes. about that as you guys were I talking. Just like, that guy is so creepy. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. yeah. The most oh, dangerous, the most dangerous right game. Now. It's like, it hasn't, yeah. oh man, that dude is, is weird. Uh, and then, like, church. he starts, like, backing yeah. out of the basement. It's like, get the hell out of yeah, there, man. Like, yeah. Get out of there. <laughs> you're, like, screaming at the camera. Right, the screen you there. are you are the black guy from 40-Year-Old Virgin yeah. on the couch. Just yeah. get out the room. Just get out the room. <laughs> like, exactly. Hell yeah. Like, oh, man. Um, and, that's, and that's just, like, I don't know, the suspense aspect of what yes. Fincher can do and translate to film is just so well done every time. Seven, I mean, this film, like... Uh, even girl with a dragon tattoo, like um, well, even you know going into the getting the cars right, getting the clothing yeah, right, and getting exciting. everything set up to bring you back to the time when the Zodiac Killer was like the thing, you know, the thing. I'm but, literally gonna go watch this movie when I get home. Um, <laughs> I gotta find it in like Walmart's. Uh, it's in the. Band. It's in the Blu-ray. Band. I think so. I saw it. Yeah, I think I had it in my hand yeah, too. I'm gonna be digging. Yeah, uh, but uh, that's been in the bin for a long time because I bought it like two years ago. Yeah, that's right. But, but all right, that's a good one. All right, Damon's so we gotta we gotta hammer this up before Damon has to get the hell out of here. So let's start with um, what do you guys think for number one? You guys had we both Zodiac. had Zodiac, so I'm assuming that would be number one. Well, fuck you, Damon. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shutting you down this week. Uh, one I have one I have enemy, but what do you guys have at two? Nightcrawler was my two. I have Prisoners at two. I had End of Watch. So, what do we want to do here? What's your one? All right, Enemy it is. <clears throat> uh, three, we can go then to... You had... I had... He had Nightcrawler. <clears throat> we so had I, End of Watch. I think End of Watch should be three. Yeah, I mean, we all had it on our list. Did everybody have Nightcrawler on the list? I had Nightcrawler. It was outside of my top five. Okay. I had it well, at three. End of Watch is seven for me. But... Yeah, if you could, if you both have End of Watch in your top five, then go for it. End of Watch is three. It was your two? Yeah. Yep. Okay. End of Watch. Uh, four. You Night had Crawler. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. I Nightcrawler had it on my list. Sure. You had it on your list. I had it pretty high on my list. Wow, this is going <laughs> fast, man. Knocked out four. Uh, five. So Nightcrawler's gone. Zodiac's gone. I had Prisoners? Yes, I would say Prisoners. Yeah, because I had it at uh, one my... lower than you. It was not. It was my number five originally. My six then. Yeah. Okay. Prisoners, and then six. What do you guys have at your four and five? Source code, Donnie Darko. Yep. You both had source code. I had source code. Where source code and source Donnie code Darko of... are on my top five still. This source code is outside. It's I had source 10. code five and Donnie Darko four. I had source code three, Donnie Darko four. So what do you want to do? Darko at six you or had Darko source code? On yours, right? No, I did not. Oh, not at all. Well, not then source all. code. Source code. You gotta fight for some movies, Trace. All right. Huh? I Maybe. did. I just fought for my number three. You son of a bitch. Um. Trust me, I had to. I had to say that Star Wars wasn't the greatest soundtrack to, or score of all time. I I know how this works. Oh, in my top five, all as well as Brokeback Mountain. Okay. Um, but what do you guys have left? I have October Sky. <clears throat> it was out of my top five, but it was on my list. It Donnie Darko is the only one that is on my list, on my top five. I have That's... Darko at seven and okay. Source Code at six. Okay. So we have eight, nine, ten left. What do you guys have left? Anything? You had to have Jarhead somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Jar- Jarhead, Jarhead yeah, was right. at seven for me. Jarhead got him. pushed up. It was like my eight, my seven, yeah. Okay, so I, I think... I think October Sky being it's the only one that was, was it's within my top five. Yeah. Yeah. So that and, that would be next. That'd be right? fine. And it was on my list too. And then Jarhead. Is that it then? Uh, uh, for number ten, uh, the day after tomorrow. No. Yeah. yeah? Broke no. back mountain. Okay. Yeah. Broke back mountain. That's the only that's <laughs> the one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'll do ten nine eight. You do seven six five. You do four three two. I'm yeah. the other one. But I'll yell it. You guys, can you see these lists? I'm gonna be able to right now, yeah. I All can, right, so now another first. top ten, dude. Don't fudge with that, man. It's an apple. Come We're on, good. Yeah, um, I no, know how to no use viruses. Those. Nice. Uh, Impressive. 
So we got not in our top ten shows. Best Jake Gyllenhaal films. Number ten, Brokeback Mountain. Number nine, Ura Jarhead. Number eight, October Sky. Number seven, Donnie Darko. Number six, Source Code. Number five, Prisoners. They got all of your breath on that one. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Number four was Nightcrawler. Number three, End of Watch. And number two, Enemy. And our number one best Jake Gyllenhaal film is... Zodiac. Zodiac. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. And remember, if you guys don't listen to the beginning and just fast forward to the end, we are doing a, um, a competition for the Hateful Eight uh, Ultraviolet Code. Best comment wins you have until the next video that we put up to comment and we will take a panel of three and choose who has the best comment I want to thank colin wells jack mehoff joe for commenting on our our stuff um everybody on facebook that's been commenting everybody who's been sharing the uh the podcast liking it um subscribing everybody keep doing that because we're really uh we're, we're making strides and we're really excited about this so um keep it coming thank you so much and Oh, come on. Do you guys have anything cool to say at the end? I forgot um, to say something. Uh, uh, something Jake Gyllenhaal says. Um, What's a line from Bone Boy? Say it. I don't know. That. Punani is what that late... that, oh, me, yeah. that in, Okay, and remember, Punani. <laughs> from Bubba Boy.